While finding routes in Orbis provides an understanding of travel in the Empire, there is another way that Orbis provides a view into the shape of the Roman world, this time in aggregate using a dynamic distance cartogram. The distance cartogram is located in the second tab in the Mapping Orbis section. When the page first loads, you'll see a very simple map, where sites are colored according to their cost in denarii, to ship grain to Rome during the winter. The first thing you'll notice is the extreme expense to ship grain to Britain in the winter, which is due to the restriction on sea travel during the winter months. If you change the season to summer, then you'll see that Britain, by virtue of its connection to the rest of Rome, by a sea transport, is actually cheaper to ship goods to and from than, for instance, interior Spain or Germany. By clicking on Fastest, we can change the priority of travel and see how close the Empire is to Rome measured in days. We can see the difference between the physical distance of the Roman world and the actual cost to ship goods or travel to a site by activating the dynamic distance cartogram. This is done automatically as soon as you select a center from which to distort the rest of the Roman world. Let's start with Rome. You'll immediately see the sites shift in position from their physical locations and take up a position from Rome that is in the same direction but with a distance based on the time it takes to travel from that site to Rome. Sites more connected to Rome via sea routes show less distortion from their actual geographic location, while inland sites such as Tridentum or modern day Trento in northern Italy are dramatically more distant from Rome if we take into account the actual time it takes to travel there. By clicking No Distortion, we can restore the sites to their actual geographic position. Clicking on Roma will again distort the sites according to their current settings. If we change the season to winter, we'll see some slight shift around the Mediterranean that reflects the changing wind conditions from winter to summer, as well as a more significant change in the distance of sites along the Atlantic coast and in Britain as travel is forced overland due to heavy seas. By changing the center of the cartogram to Constantinopolis, we can examine the difference in the shape of the Roman world from its earlier and later centers. And similarly, we can switch between winter and summer to see if seasonality affected one center more than another. Similarly, Antiochia provides a perspective of the Levantine coast, dramatically distorting the Black Sea ports, pushing them much further away than their geographic distance as a result of the constraining factors of the Bosporus and the Dardanelles. Again, changing the seasons demonstrates differences caused by shifting winds and sea conditions. Finally, we can return to Britain and see just how far London was from the rest of the Roman world as far as time to travel was concerned. But if we change the measurement to reflect the cost to ship goods, something dramatic occurs. The cost to ship goods to and from London, as you saw in the initial purely geographic representation, places London much closer to the Mediterranean world than inland regions. If we switch back to winter, this situation is dramatically reversed. The connectivity of the Mediterranean is so high, as far as expense to ship goods, that if we change the center to Rome, the various sites on the Mediterranean and Black Sea coast are so tightly grouped together they require us to turn off the labels. Centering on Constantinopolis distorts the Black Sea into a tiny, low-cost ring, hinged at the Bosporus. Antiochia emphasizes the eastern Mediterranean region. This dynamic distance cartogram provides some capacity to examine the Orbis model in an aggregated form and see how the shape of the Roman world depended not only on your perspective, but also on your priorities and even the time of year.